Now's a good time for me to do a quick accessories video, especially for those of you who have loved ones or friends or just people that you know that are actually e-bike enthusiasts or regular bike enthusiasts that are looking for gifts to be given soon. Black Friday is in two weeks of the time that I'm filming this video, so there'll be links below to a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about. And these are the items that when somebody asks me, hey, what should I get my father-in-law? So here are some of the things that I would say are almost essentials that I ride all the time with or put on new bikes that we get in all the time. So first of all, I want to go in and talk about a couple of things that actually I have on the ebikeproducts.com website. There's only three real items that are on, on there. So first and foremost, the one first thing I wanna talk about is the ebike products bottle bag. You can get these on ebikeproducts.com slash shop. And you'll find that these bags are really, really convenient. I have reviews on them. They're on all my bikes, but basically they can strap on pretty much in multiple places on bikes and also on scooters. And you can, they have a stretchy top so you can stick your bottle in and even close it up here. But I also have two packs and the reason why I sell them in also two packs, a lot of times people want to use these just as a secondary pocket. For instance, it does also have a pocket here that's a little stretchy that fits a cell phone. If you wanna put a cell phone in there or maybe a wallet or credit card because it is stretchy, it won't fall out. But the other thing is a lot of times when I'm just running errands, I stick actually my wallet and my keys inside of this. I don't like riding with stuff in my pockets because I don't know if it'll fall out. I have one for water a water bottle like this, and this is made to fit up to a one liter water bottle. It's really versatile, comes with five straps on each for each bottle bag that you get. So there's multiple places that you can actually strap it onto a bike very securely. So that's the first one. The next one actually we have here is cell phone holders. And this cell phone holder is so that you can track actually your mileage or of course uh, your directions if you have, or even your music, if you actually do ride with some type of open ear safe headphone sets. I use this for my GPS tracking and for the speed that I'm actually going for each one of the videos here. So the cell phone holder is also on the ebikeproducts.com website. Again, there's links below, but if you go to ebikeproducts.com slash shop, it'll take you right to there. Now, the third thing that we sell is specifically originally brought in for the electric XP. And it not only fits electric XP, there's other bikes that it actually does fit well on. We also have a 27.2 millimeter that actually fits on either something like the Alstom motor or even the Ride One Up Core 5. I actually have one of those on them, but it is a suspension seat post. So, but what it does is the electric XP does not have suspension on the back of the bike. In fact, none of them actually have suspension on the back of the bike. So this actually does give a little more suspension making the ride a little smoother. This goes for $29.95, that includes shipping and tax. And if you buy it on the website at ebikeproducts.com, we also include a tool so that you can actually put these on. If you go on Amazon and you're buying it there, we sell it for about the same price, very competitive against them as well, but they don't include the tool to go ahead and actually install it, which is just an Allen wrench, just a five millimeter, I believe. It does help that you don't have to go find one, it already is there for you to put this on here. It fits almost any bike that has for the Electric XP, a 31.6 millimeter post has to be that size. My posts are guaranteed to fit them. Now, keep in mind the Zoom posts that I am selling on the website, they are rated so that it's not really set for anybody who's taller than 5'11". So if you're taller than 5'11", I do not recommend actually buying my seat post. But if you're 5'11 and below, these, these seat posts do pretty well. You can also adjust the tension on the spring so that if you are on the little heavier side and it's too soft for you, you can actually tighten it up on the bottom and that will help to keep it so that it's not as bouncy and doesn't suspend as much. So those are the three things. Top, I put on almost every bike that I actually can that actually will allow for the seat post. Every bike I do put on the bottle holder for sure. The other thing I do is put on the cell phone holder on as well. So those are the th three things that I would start off with as far as something to look at. Great for stocking stuffers. And the next thing I want to talk about, and these are not in any specific order. These are just a whole bunch of different accessories I think are kind of really helpful for people to have. Now, if the person you're buying for, or if it's for you and you have a rack on the back of your bike, I would actually say the Rock Brothers bag here is actually one of the best uh, utility bags or carrying bags that you can actually get on the market. Now this one here is particularly a little more expensive. It's, a lot of times they do run above a hundred dollars. Now keep an eye out for Black Friday deals or something like that. But the Rock, Bro Rock Brothers bag, this one actually has that carbon fiber look 
kind of like plastic. So it is a little water resistance against drizzle and those other types of elements that splashes and it's easier to clean because it has kind of a plastic type feel. I do have a review done on this in the past, so I'll put a link for that below if you want to look more in depth in detail. But the cool thing about this is that I have one of the pannier side bags open. This holds a lot of space, especially during the winter. When I start riding, I do ride with a sweatshirt like this and even maybe a windbreaker type jacket on top of it or even sometimes a puffy jacket. But during the midday, it starts to warm up and I need a place to put my jacket. I pop this open and it fits and it actually will pay, take a puffy snow jacket. In fact, I just want to give an example. I have a helmet stuck in here. So even if you want to carry a second helmet, you can actually stick it in there. So if you're not using it though, it neatly folds up becomes pretty compact in itself right here. I left the strap on, but you can remove this strap, but if you actually need to take the bag off, these are all, it's just Velcro strapped to the bike. You can actually lift the bike up with this. It straps on really, really well. The other thing I really like about this is that it also has a water bottle holder in the back. So if you don't have a water bottle holder on your bike here that's accessible or easy, you can actually have a second one. Or if you carry, sometimes I carry two water bottles. One here and I also put one on the front of the bike there. So this is also really cool, especially if you're riding with somebody also who doesn't have a water bottle holder on their bike. And in any place you can actually carry a water bottle on top of somebody, for somebody else as well. So that's a nice little feature that it has here. It has all of these extra little straps. I added these carabiners on because I like to sometimes clip on, especially because we do a lot of filming with the uh, Ocelot bike here. That's why it's actually on here, we do that. The other thing that it actually does has is the ability to also increase the capacity of the main contraction, I mean the main compartment here. So that's actually another big feature as well. This bag here does a lot. So it costs a little more. There are other brands out there that actually are more economical in pricing, which there's nothing wrong. Even Rock Brothers does make a lesser model. The thing I like about this one is that it actually does come with a rain cover if you want one, but it also is auto ready. Pretty water resistance against uh, splashes or um, regular, just even light rain. You don't have to worry too much about your stuff getting too wet because of kind of a plasticky um, outside covering on it. It's water resistant already. So that's why it's cost a little more. And I'll have a link down below that you can get on Amazon for this. That is gonna be an affiliate link. So if you do buy any of these items, I do get a small commission for that. And I hope goes to help support the channel and I appreciate it very much. The next thing I wanna talk about is Helmets. Now, helmets are kind of a little personal, but I want to talk about the X-Needle helmet in particular because if your loved one is an e-bike rider, these are made to go up to 28 miles an hour damage, I guess, or they're certified at that level. So these, and they also come with lights on the front and on the back. This is the front. This is the back. So you can actually adjust it for flashing, blinking, pulsing, and then off. So it's built into that, plus again, it actually has one of the highest certifications as far as safety goes for uh, e-bike riders in particular because of the speeds that we actually ride at. It can go up 20 miles an hour, and again, this is certified for it. It also does have this uh, adjuster. You just stick it on your head and adjust it here. There's a lot of cool different designs that they also make. I really like these helmets. In fact, my whole team that we go riding together to do all our filming and reviews, we all have X-Needle helmets now. Standard e bike helmets, even though they're certified, are usually, I think, only up to 15 miles an hour impact. Next thing that we have that I want to go and talk about these are special pedals for those of you who have very tight spaces. What you see here is the complete width of my garage. So whenever I'm not filming or doing reviews or unboxing in the garage here, basically I need to get all the cars in and we need to put everything up against the side of the wall and kind of compact them up. And one of the main things I like to do is remove the pedals because it brings in the width of the bike an extra almost eight inches, 10 inches. So, and the way that we do that is because this can actually quick release right off the bike here. This is the pedal on, I just push in and this is a quick release and the pedal comes right off. And if I wanna put it back on, stick it in here and stick it right back on. The other cool thing about having pedals like this is that because they're quick release, if you actually are in a bind and you need to leave your bike somewhere and maybe it's not the safest place, you can take your pedals with you. Now, it's not that they can't run off with your bike, but it's gonna be harder for them to ride without pedals, especially if you've taken out your battery or a lot of times I'll even take my seat. And that's another thing that you can actually do with these. So quick release pedals. Again, I'll have that as the link below down here. The next thing I wanna talk about is seats. 
or if you yourself or you have a person that you're buying a gift for still has the stock seat from their bike, you might want to look into something called the Cloud9 or the Bikeroo seat. Now, I don't have a sample of the Bikeroo here, but I do have a video when I compared the two. And to me, they're very similar. Cloud9 is a little more expensive, a little higher quality on some of the materials that they use, a little heavier. As far as the softness goes, they're both really soft in my opinion, almost equally the same except for the design of the um, Bikeroo was a little shorter on the snout. Either way, this is actually, depending on the type of bike that you have, this actually is a number one actually selling seat right now on the market is the Cloud9. By far, that's the one seat that's the hardest to find when it starts to get um, low on inventory in different places. It is one that actually a lot of e-bike riders like to ride. Now there's another seat I'd also like to mention, which is called the Giddy Up seat. This is more of a standard style comfort seat and they have a similar softness to this, which is very comfortable. Now it's not an extra wide, so that's something to keep in mind. But the one thing I like about this is that there's a lot of bikes like this, um, the Alstom motor here. There's a lot of bikes that don't have integrated taillights. So what I can do is uh, this comes with a built-in light. And you know, right now with the daylight savings, it gets darker so much earlier. If you do end up riding that you're going to be riding in the dark, even if you have an integrated taillight, this adds a lot of extra visibility because a lot of integrated taillights don't blink. They just stay on. So having an extra blink actually does help attract the eye. So drivers are more aware of you coming and it even has a slow pulse and a fast pulse. So this is actually something that I really like about it. And it's a fairly comfortable seat at a very economical price. So again, if somebody has a stock seat and they've never tried something softer because they just never thought about it. This seat is actually a very uh, highly recommended one. I would recommend getting some of this. I've ridden this already and I really like it. It's like maybe, I don't know, almost equally as soft, if not softer than the Cloud9, but keep in mind it's not as wide. That's why a lot of people like Clyde, the Cloud9 and the Bikeroos is because it's wider, so there's a little more support. But this is definitely wider than the stock seat that came with this bike. And if you notice, the width on this, there's almost an extra inch on both sides. And that's why a lot of people like it. So there's not so much pressure on the tailbone. It kind of spreads out that pressure that's there. And it's easy to turn on and off. There's just a little button underneath. And you have your, again, your steady light on, your flash, your fast flash, your slow pulse, and you're turned off there. So you just hit it a few times. Now, the other one that I do have that I don't have any on the bikes right now is also an alarm. And those are really inexpensive. But even when I was in New York a couple weeks ago, was blown away at how many food service people use e-bikes to go in and ride around the city to go and deliver food. And a lot of them, whenever they came to a stop and got off their bikes, you could hear them arm their bikes. So they all use that kind of similar thing because any type of motion immediately sets it off. Now, of course, they lock it up with a lot of heavy duty locks as well, but that's another thing that I did notice. And I thought it's also a really good idea to give for someone who actually does ride their bike a lot and may have to stop and get off and do certain errands. The other thing I wanna talk about is the Hafni mirrors. And these mirrors here actually are, uh, different styles. Hafni does come with a bunch of different styles of mirrors and these are the, the more of the mainstream ones that you actually will see. The one that you see here. The only thing I would recommend is taking a look at the width of the handlebars and the reason being is that if the handlebars are a little on the thinner side and you have this on top of your your e-bikes, a lot of e-bikes have their controllers here. So this does not go far enough out on thinner handlebars to get past the body. So what Hafni does is they also have the end of bar and I love these. I never, I was never a big fan of bar end handlebars until Hafni sent this for me to try. It's past the body and you don't have to worry about controller space or handlebar space being in the way. So Hafni mirrors, I'll have a link to a whole bunch of their whole store to go and take a look at those. I highly recommend if your e-bike rider does not have mirrors, this is almost an essential. I think honestly, e-bike companies should start including mirrors on all their bikes, just as a safety feature there. Another thing I want to bring up, there's nothing that can ruin your day faster than getting a flat tire, honestly. I mean, it's one of those few things that you get a flat tire out there, I would highly recommend looking in as a stocking stuffer. If they don't have tire sealant and they're riding around uh, on a bike and they have never had a flat, it's just like almost buying insurance for them that they never have to worry about it. Flat out tire sealant, 
is actually phenomenal. I mean, since I've actually started using it, I haven't had one flat yet. Before using flat out, I've had over five flats in such short periods of time, like under a year. And I kept getting flats all the time because in my era, we have thorns and even, or plastic shards that actually made a tire flat once before as well. And tire sealant can actually heal a flat tire that's just recently gotten flat. So if you got a thorn flat and your bike is sitting there and you don't have time to take it to the repair shop, get a bottle of this, pump it in there and see if that actually just seals up the hole and you're good to go. I've actually done that before where before I started using tire sealant, I got a flat, I used tire sealant to repair the flat. They didn't even put a patch on it, just put tire sealant in, pumped up the tire and it started to work. And flat out since then, it's been every new bike I get, I put in flat out and I have never had a flat since and we don't have to worry about it. Doing e-bike reviews, there's been twice where we've actually had flats on the first day riding. And of course, like I said, it just ruins the whole day. So this is actually I, one of my highest recommendations. It's just a simple bottle. You can get this, again, I'll have a link below. Get the Sportsman Formula. Uh, it's the one with the yellow band on it and that would actually works. If you have multiple bikes, they actually have a gallon size like this. There's a lot of different accessories out there. All of these brands that I've actually mentioned, I would say check those out first. And if you don't, then see what else is available to you. There's so many things to make our ride more fun. Safe riding for everybody. I hope you guys have happy holidays and I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.